Let's take this one out. Oh, God, look at that. What did he do, the sew blurry. down the muscle? Is it completely closed off? Yep, he took cadaver skin and extended oh, the muscle. He, oh, my gosh. This is all cadaver skin. Seeing all that cadaver skin. My name is Brittany, and I bring a whole new meaning to Double Ds. I have two sets of breast implants in my body. I have a set here, and I have a set here. Did she say she has two breast implants in each breast? The scientific term for that is stacked, and this is not something that you see every day. My first augmentation, I went with the 600 cc's and everything was wonderful. So 600 cc's is a big implant. In the average woman, a 600 cc implant will probably get her to a double D to triple D, possibly larger. So she received big implants to start with. About 10 months after my surgery, I ended up going back to the gym. Immediately, I knew I messed my boobs up because on the right side, my breast implant started poking through my skin. Most of my patients after breast augmentation surgery start exercising at three weeks. So this happened to her 10 months later. Now, it's not real obvious exactly what that is, but it's possible it could be an actual wrinkle from the implant. So an implant shell can wrinkle, uh, whether it's saline or silicone, although more common with saline implants, and sometimes that wrinkle can actually feel like something hard sticking out of the breast. The surgeon didn't have a definitive answer, but he did say that he wouldn't mess with it, so I decided I was going to look elsewhere. Ooh, I think this is where you've got that fork in the road and you can go one direction where the surgeon says, you know what, it's not perfect, but it's, it's best just to live with it because the solution may be worse than the problem. Or you could take that other fork where now you may be going into uncharted territory. In general, I try to encourage my patients to take the more conservative, safer fork in the road. I felt like if we were gonna have it done again, I wanted to go bigger. I wanted to go 1,300 cc's. 1,300 cc's? 800 cc's is the largest breast implant that we make in the United States. We're talking bigger than Dolly Parton, more like Pam Anderson, and like watermelon sized. Not a good idea. Every single doctor told me that they would not do that because it would give me all kinds of complications and it took me five or six consults to finally find the doctor who gave me these. So I hope you're cringing at this story like I am. So she saw five or six doctors who turned her down for the operation. Good doctors, great job guys and gals. But she found finally one doctor crazy enough to actually take her up on this offer. So if you are seeing doctors for consultation and the vast majority of them say this is not a good idea, you really need to consider that is probably not a good idea. So I went into surgery and when I woke up, I had my big boobs and I was happy, but I was in a lot of pain. Pretty quickly, I realized that it didn't go so well. I noticed a puzzle piece where the right side of my cleavage dipped in and then the left side followed that. It made me really self-conscious. I just knew I made a horrible decision. So what is going on here? It looks to me by looking at her video that she has one breast implant that's high, possibly under the muscle, and another breast implant that is low, possibly above the muscle. I hope Dr. Debro and Dr. Nassif can give me one set of implants because the back pain from my boobs just kills me and I want the opportunity to redo this mistake. I often do breast reduction surgeries where women come to see me with excessively large breasts. Typically in these situations, we remove anywhere from 500 grams to 2,000 grams and patients find such a relief in their back, neck, and shoulder pain from taking away all of that weight. Now you consider this woman where she added 1,200 cc's into each breast. Well, that's more than I remove in most of my breast reduction surgeries, so I'm not surprised that she's having back, neck, and shoulder pain. We can take them all out, put a new pair in, and do some kind of lifting procedure, which means scars. Okay. 
I don't know if I want to take that risk having all these scars. I think I'd be okay with the one under here. I don't think I'd be okay with the one here. It may not be possible to do it with just this. They may have to have a vertical component. There are three types of breast lifts. There is a donut breast lift where the scar extends circularly around the areola. That surgery is typically only used when the patient has very minimal droopiness to the breast. The lollipop breast lift has a scar that extends around the areola and vertically down, like a lollipop. That is done in cases of kind of mild to moderate droopiness. And then the final kind is the anchor scar, and that scar extends around the areola vertically down and underneath the breast. So that's what this patient and Dr. Dubrow are talking about is he's saying, look, I may need to do the complete anchor scar, but the patient is hoping to avoid the vertical scar. For Brittany's surgery today, we're going to first remove the two sets of stacked implants. Then we'll insert a single pair of 800 cc implants and try to determine whether or not Brittany will need both horizontal and vertical incisions in order to give her the breast lift that she needs. So she is downsizing down to an 800 cc implant. And 800 cc, as I mentioned earlier, is the biggest size that we make in the United States. So she's still going to be quite large. Let's take this one out. Oh, God, look at that. What did he do? Sew so down the muscle? Is it completely closed off? Yep. He took cadaver skin and extended oh, the muscle. Oh, my gosh. This is all cadaver skin. Seeing all that cadaver skin, I think to myself, is this surgery or Silence of the Lambs? So what is going on here? It looked like there was one breast implant that was above the muscle, basically underneath the skin, and that was what he pulled out initially. There's another implant that was under the muscle, but the muscle itself can only cover part of the implant. It can't cover the whole thing typically. And so what some doctors will do is the top of the implant will be covered by muscle, but the bottom part will be covered by some other product to keep the implant in place. And the product most commonly used is cadaver skin. Yes, that means the skin from a dead person inside your breast. Did you know that you can look upwards of five years younger in just two minutes a day? You don't need to put a ton of products on your skin to look and feel amazing. The Yoon Beauty Two Minutes Five Years Younger Skincare Bundle is perfect for the busy person who wants glowing skin with the least amount of work. I put these four products together just for you. They're made with natural and organic ingredients, great for all skin types, and perfect for all genders. Check out the Yoon Beauty Two Minutes Five Years Younger Skincare Bundle at YoonBeauty.com and get over $30 off the individual product price. I guarantee you'll love these products or your money back. He lifted the muscle up because the muscle wouldn't cover the whole implant. He sewed a piece of cadaver skin in as a shelf, yep. keeping the upper one under the muscle way up here. He gets 10 points for creativity, that's for sure. Look at this thing. Let's go to the other side. OK, here it is. This is the one on top of the muscle. And this is the one inside. Isn't that incredible? So when you look at the pictures and the videos of her, she had kind of that area at the top of her breast that stuck out. That was the implant that was partially under the muscle, partially under the cadaver skin. The other implant was basically below that and was more droopy and settling down lower than that. That was the part of the breast that you mostly saw. And my guess is the doctor used the cadaver skin there because he didn't want both implants moving around in the pocket. It's an interesting thought, but it is crazy. Okay, so let's put an 800 cc. Brittany wanted an 800 cc implant to give her the volume that she likes. Fortunately, that's almost exactly what I need to give her the contour that she really wants. I think I've put 800 cc implants into cosmetic breast patients maybe three or four times in the last 15 years. So this is not a size that I use commonly because 800 cc still is so big and so heavy that it's prone to drooping of the breast, it's prone to causing back, neck, and shoulder pain, and even you can get stretching of the tissue from how heavy the implant is. Okay, we've taken off two large 
ellipses from the bottom part of each breast, trying not to have to make a vertical incision. Let's see what it looks like. Don't want to give her a vertical scar. The reason why he had to remove that extra skin from the bottom part of her breast is because the weight of those implants caused the skin on the bottom part of her breast to stretch out. And by cutting that skin out and stitching it back together, you remove that extra skin and create a little bit of a lift of where the implant sits. So, I knew I was gonna do some tightening of the vertical skin. So, can I do it without scars? That was the big thing, so. I got it. Oh, oh yeah. right? my gosh. Huh? Thank you. No vertical incision. So much. Oh, my God. Let's take a look. Let's go. There we go. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. If they really do look normal already. Dr. Debro completely pulled off my surgery, and my boobs are sitting where they should be. I'm glad that seems to have worked out for her. You do have to keep in mind that that scar underneath her breast, that is a permanent scar. So she will have that the rest of her life. And it does take anywhere from six to 12 months for the scar to completely mature. Before my last surgery, I literally had four implants stacked inside my chest. I was extremely regretting that decision, and I wish I had never did that. Now, since my surgery with Dr. Debro, I look a million times better, and I can definitely tell that they're actually where they're supposed to sit. They look wonderful now. You ready for this walk? Want me to carry the backpack or you got it? Nope, I got it. I never would have thought that my boobs had that much impact on my life. Just words do not cut it. Thank you so much. Sorry. <laughs> He did such a nice job for her, and I'm so happy that this has really impacted her in such a positive way. If you consider plastic surgery, you got to be careful on what you do. And if you've got five plastic surgeons telling you not to do it, then really you got to consider this may not be a good idea. Well, in addition to fixing breasts that have gone way wrong, the Bosch doctors are also great at fixing noses that have gone way wrong. One of the craziest things that I've seen them do is to actually help a woman who had the vast majority of the inside of her nose missing. Take a peek at this video right up here where I react to the Bosch doctors fixing this major, major deformity. And always remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.